Alright, I hit record. Hi guys, so we're going to talk to you today about mental health in students. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of the purposes. So some of their purposes are going to be to reflect on the issues regarding mental health um, in today's society, to explore people's experience with mental health, um, those who are open to talking about it, to discuss the effects from quarantine and COVID-19 and how that has affected us, to share people's visions for an inclusive university community, and then to brainstorm actions that can help us build such a community. So these will be some purposes that we'll hit on throughout the presentation. Hello, my name is Diana, and today I will be talking about setting the context, um, a brief background on the topic. Um, college students tend to not pay attention to their mental health because at the end of the day, they all have the same goal, which is to graduate. A uh, role of the facilitator will be to inform the audience of the existing issues that correlate to mental health issues in students that come from the stress of assignments and needing to meet deadlines, all while balancing their social life outside of school, trying to keep a balance between both. Some of the ground rules will be um, being respectful of others when they wish to discuss their personal experiences related to this topic. Uh, just be mindful of the things you say when sharing your opinion and be empathetic of others' feelings. Keep in mind that this is a very sensitive topic that we're going to discuss today. My name is Nico, and obviously, as we stated before, our topic is mental health in students. Um, some of the things that we're going to do, besides what was already said, is introduce the topic, why we chose it, and include about two small videos and elaborate more that elaborate more on mental health in total. And before we start, we will we will now have everyone introduce themselves first. Um, yeah, and then everyone introduces themselves. We have an army. Wait, we I'm can introduce Abby. ourselves. Yeah. So I'm Jacob. I'm Brittany. I'm Katie. Hi, I'm Diana. <laughs> okay. okay. And then Bambi's right there. I, I uh, said it at the beginning. Okay, I didn't hear it. So our topic for today is highlighting the importance of mental health in students and how it can affect all of us in more ways than one. Um, mental health is very real, whether we are students or not. There are several things that we face as students that can affect us, but first let's dive into why we chose the topic. Um, so our group chose this topic because, because of its relevance. Life is stressful, especially while trying to balance school, work, a social life, growing up, etc. Mental health still has a negative stereotype and we wanted to shed light on it and the importance of mental health, especially during the pandemic. My turn, right? Okay. So um, I will be introducing two videos. Uh, I just want to give a trigger warning first that they do unpack some serious issues that uh, college students deal with. So trigger warning. Let me share my screen. Oh, not host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just remembered. Well, we would we would show the videos, but YouTube doesn't yeah. like that, and I need to get this mm -hmm. video uploaded. So, got it, got it, got <laughs> yeah. it. Okay. so this part basically to David, oh. we're just gonna show the videos. Yeah. Um, first video is the one we already showed last week, and the second one dissects a little bit more about like mental health as a whole on a campus mm -hmm. and how it affects the students. Yeah. And and yeah. Yeah. Since we already watched the two videos, we can, or I have the experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. part of this so I can ask people questions about it so does anyone here share any experiences similar to the first video if you would like to speak me anyone um I've had similar experiences with like the first one, like not really the parents arguing because my parents divorced like when I was in third grade, but I definitely dealt with like the mental stress of it all since I would go see my dad on the weekend and all he would ever talk about is how 
he's the one that puts money on the table and my mom just uses it to spend on herself and never gives us anything. And he would constantly just like make me feel like I was part of the problem because it's like, you're telling me all this stuff as if I have control over it. And it's like, it's none of my business. And it's just, it's something that I hate looking, that I hate that I know will happen every time I see him. Gosh, it's really hard not to say thank you for sharing, but <laughs> th thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, does that, does anyone else have any experiences similar to the video that they like to share? So I think um, the second video is also really interesting because um, it definitely shows many things that we all say daily. Like, I feel like I'm just submitting assignments and how it's just like, feels like college is so distant away from us, especially if some of us are taking like asynchronous classes where it's just online and not Zoom. So I think um, almost every college, I can't speak for everyone, but I think it relates a lot to how things really are during a pandemic and can be very stressful for everyone. So I think mental health really is important when especially dealing with students and being in a pandemic. So. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting, the vi both videos. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're kind of essentially saying that uh, in this pandemic, the the heightened feels of uh, mental health uh, are kind of reflected in our own daily lives at SJSU, for example, or through, even through Zoom, whatnot? Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, okay, so... Do any of uh, the experiences that anyone in the room has had with mental health kind of reflect the general public's experiences with mental health, or is there anything that um, is there anything that people have experienced with mental health that's kind of like a common consensus for people in society nowadays, really? Um. Yeah, I would, I would say a lot of people feel isolated. I know I've had that feeling, especially now during this pandemic. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. It's, um, isolation is definitely uh, a big part of COVID-19 with uh, everyone being quarantined, especially it lasting a year. It's, it's definitely had its toll on people. All right. Anyone else have anything else that they want to share? Yeah, I think it's the thing about isolation too, like since a lot of us are home now and just doing distance learning, I think I'm not speaking for everyone else, like I said, but for me, like it kind of drives me crazy being around my parents a lot, you know, and my fam for like such a long period of time. So I think they're definitely different aspects that can even cause mental health other than just like the piles on piles on like schoolwork and then paying for tuition you know what I mean just like things at home like aren't always like it's just it can get all over the place sometimes mm -hmm. balancing everything I think to like also the stress of a lot of families losing jobs and a lot of people like being out of a job and having to pay for school and like the school's not giving anybody a break um and I know like they really can't but there's like something they could do like we're still paying for the cafeteria fees we're still paying for the on-campus experience yet we're not getting any of that and they're not even you know giving us that through a zoom so I think that's also really hard is when we try and you know, we're paying for schools and everything, and then we're not getting it all. So mm -hmm. it, it adds more stress and more mental like problems. I feel like yeah. That's what how is how is this kind of thing affected your mental health? Um, really rough, honestly. I mean, like that whole situation. Like, I lost my job, um, and I pay for my classes and all my school. And I really was about to like I'm in my last year, and I thought I was gonna have to drop out, um, and just like hold off for a year. Um, and I was just able to like somehow pull together and just do it and I found a new job and just made it work and I mean like it's I have like one of those days where it's like just dips everybody has good and bad days you know we have our highs and lows 
and I definitely hit a couple of rough patches, but I was able to like get myself back up and put myself back on like my feet and get there. And so yeah, I mean, you definitely have those days. Mm -hmm. If not days, it's weeks. And if it's weeks, it's months. So, I mean, we're, it's just, we all got to get through a rough patch. And so, um, yeah. Indeed. All right. So unless anyone else has anything else to say, I think uh, we can move on to the visions and possibilities. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think that mental health in the future will look like for students in the next 10, 20 years? I think that highly depends on if people start to take mental health more seriously now instead of like what we've been taught by our parents where it's like if it's not physically hurting you then it's not happening so it really depends on if we decide to actually take mental health and in, into action and actually do things to either prevent or support or like make it better because i'm pretty sure we've all had like been told that where it's like why are, why are you depressed over you're not paying these bills you're not doing that you're not doing this i'm the one holding this house together it's like you have nothing to be depressed over when depression and the effects of mental health come from a lot more than just you know pain bills and shit yeah so you're saying um if like everybody's more proactive about the way we treat mental health mm -hmm. um that'll i guess the way things change will depend on that yeah. and so if people are more proactive what do you think it'll look like if people next? are more proactive they will probably take the stuff that our parents or our, or the older generation told us that was like it would they would probably take more measures to ensure that the next generation probably grows more like attentive towards not just physical health and but mental health too like like an example would be like if your parents told you something when you were a kid like oh toughen up like you need to grow up you're not a kid and all that stuff and therefore invalidating how you feel because you're upset then for the next generation of parents or whatever you could tell that you could tell your child that it's okay to feel the way you feel like you have feelings for a reason your feelings are valid instead of just telling them to get over it and grow up because that shows them that they can't trust you with their emotions which just leads them to isolate their emotions to themselves because if they can't trust their parent who can they trust yeah i totally agree i feel like as we get older too like the biggest pet peeve i'm hearing that's really affecting me is like the oh adulting sucks like get used to it and it's like ah, mm -hmm. oh, like i understand and like but like i'm not used to this like especially going from like college we're still in school like and then you go to a whole new life mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to get there. And it, it puts people in a lot of different stages of depression of mental health and everything. And mm -hmm. I think it's really hard when people are like, oh, well, it's, you're adulting. It sucks. Like, no, but like, okay, like help me, guide me, teach me. Like, no, just tell me it sucks because then it's, it's going to suck worse. And then I'm going to feel like I'm failing. And I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing is failing is a huge um, effect on our mental health. We think it's like a negative thing where sometimes it could be a positive, <clears throat> but I think it also like really affects the way that we like look at ourselves in our mental health. Yeah, so it sounds like we need a little more guidance, I would say with um, how to adult and how I guess we're all figuring out the norms of mental health as we go. Um, so if things don't improve or mental health awareness declines, what do you think how things will look in the next few years? They're probably, I'd say there would probably be a lot more suicides and possibly a lot more murder and crimes. Um, probably not a lot of students going to college, dropping out probably even before they finish high school, just kind of either kind of either settling for less like settling for a nine to five job or settling for even less like homelessness could probably be on the rise after that also like the people who because like i mean things are starting to open up people are getting vaccinated but there's still a huge percentage of people who aren't leaving their house 
who are still um, staying indoors and how that's affecting them, um, it can only get worse if they're not going to be able to like get out and um, start to get back to any type of normal life. Mm-hmm. Staying locked up like that for this long could really affect them as well. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for sharing. It sounds like the pandemic, I guess, will play a huge part in the future. Um, all righty. I guess for the sake of time, we could move on to the next portion, actions. Yeah, for sure. Um, so basically, in my portion, we're going to discuss on like how, um, what we can do, not necessarily like how Visions was, was like, like what we can do to, like what universities and us students can do to help improve mental health as a whole, because obviously it is a huge issue. So for my first question would be, what can we as students do to bring awareness and address mental health. So feel free to throw out some examples or what things we can probably do. I yeah. think something we could probably do is to um, probably use the resources that we have, like for college students specifically, the resources that we have at our college. Like for us, we have the CAP Center or we could even like, and for high schools, like they could go to like their counselor if they have one and therapy is also good. Um, and then just also, like I said, taking precautions of like this, I guess, mainly targeted towards parents, taking precautions to ensure that you're not deterior- deteriorating your child's mental health by, neglect- by neglecting them. Yeah, for sure. Um, I completely agree with what you're saying. Does anyone else have anything that can maybe come to mind? Um. Yeah, I do. I think for students, maybe reaching out to people that they haven't heard from in a while in their social circle or social media circle, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of social media, media, would you guys think that like it's kind of gotten a little bit better? Because thinking about it, like probably around 10 years ago, mental health wasn't really as publicized as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys think that social media has a big impact on? I definitely think it does. Mm-hmm. I would say social, I'm on social media a lot. So I've seen a lot of like my friends post like ways you can improve your mental health, uh, Black Lives Matters movements, uh, how to support, uh, GoFundMe pages for this stuff, for that. It's like a lot. So social media definitely helps spread awareness for a lot of things, which is why it's a very useful. Um, So I would say, yeah, social media definitely plays a big role when it comes to either improving or deteriorating mental health, depending on how much it's spoken about Mm -hmm. by others. Yeah, I agree. And I think with like the advancement of social media, because I feel like a lot of people are on social media now, like it's just going to keep going up, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving on from students, what we can do as students, what do you guys think like universities and even junior colleges could do to help Mm -hmm. encourage students? I think I think that um, universities could um, not only well I think a majority of universities kind of say it's like uh, they they brush it aside and say it's uh, it's optional and kind of don't treat it as a priority uh, especially because like when it comes to mental health it's not even usually the universities um themselves or this like the main staff show or not showing but uh like encouraging it but really like the teachers and like other faculty or even students advocating for it so i think that the um, the universities can really take a take a step to really prioritize um, advertising mental health and as well as like maybe making like different workshops or making therapy more ac- accessible or easier to e- easier to get to for students just stuff like that in general yeah would you say like do you think campus counseling would be like a topic to maybe improve on like people like camp college campuses and maybe even high school students like do you think that 
like counselors can maybe do a little bit better or are they doing better? Maybe they should receive better pay. What do you think about that? Mm. I think maybe. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> you can go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that I think uh, counselors on campus should definitely do to do more to show their uh, to show that they're there for students because I think in like I, they're not really like talked about as often as like other facilities like the wellness center is mainly known for like doctors and prescriptions and shit like I've met like a handful of people who don't even know about the third floor so I would say they definitely should make themselves more known out there so that they know so that the students know that there's a place for them to go not just for like physical injuries or medication but also for like therapy yeah definitely because like I don't like no no shade or anything but i don't think they're doing much by just sitting in their chairs waiting for people to come to them not you mm -hmm. talking like me. <laughs> but yeah. like like they're they're not they're not they're not accomplishing as much as they probably think they are just sitting there and being an option for people and because when when you tell someone something's optional chances are they're probably not going to do it so especially when it comes to students because the assignments so uh when, when assignments are optional you ain't gonna do them so i think i think they just have to do a better job of uh advertising making themselves known and making sure that the students know that it's it's not something that should be brushed off too lightly yeah definitely and i think that's a really good part to debrief on there's a little bit more that we could talk about but based on like time and based on time crunching like how Brittany was saying um i think we could move on to the debrief portion of our group that's so. okay so yeah um so for the debriefing um what stood out to what stood out to y'all like the most about what someone shared in the group what we shared so far um, I would honestly just say how open everybody was about um, different thoughts and opinions mm -hmm. and how we were all very open to them. Nobody um, felt disrespected, personally what I felt. Um, and so I think it was just great that we could all be open and discuss something. Um, and I think we're all kind of on the same topics of like the positive and negative things right now that are going on with mental health and how we can... Um, switch that around and how hopefully in the future we can change that so I think that was like the biggest um share for the group yeah I think it's important to create a comfortable atmosphere when working in groups anybody else got anything else to say uh I think something that really stood out to me was just the 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 general consensus that mental health should be taken a lot more seriously and that it's not something that is talked about that often and talking about it is nice especially when it's not something you think about every day and mm -hmm. bringing it up is something that can <laughs> finally uh improve your mental health okay that sounds good um next question so out of everything we shared has anyone found any similarities with any other person like, yeah, I can. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. You can go. Um, I was going to say I can totally relate to Katie's. I mean, to everybody's essentially. But when Katie was talking about, um, you know, like adult life and work, um, I was able to relate because, I mean, you probably already know, but I've been like super stressed out with work um, and my mom got laid off because of the pandemic. So on top of school, I have like that stress. So I was able to relate to that and it was just good to hear you know that I'm not the only one that has been stressed out under the circ circumstances so it was just nice that I was able to relate to her in that okay. regard yeah anybody else have any similarities with anyone in here like about experiences yeah I just wanted to say it it is like what um Diana said it is a relief to hear other people's experiences because it's been really tough like I I nanny I wasn't able to nanny for a couple months just because everyone was scared of you know germs and you know that's my <laughs> that's my income <laughs> it's not like I get unemployment too from nannying so it was like 
kind of scary for a while. But yeah, so I don't know, just to like hear other people, you know, kind of sharing their experiences just gives you, um, makes you feel a little bit better that you're not in this alone, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, the next question, how different was everybody's experiences from the rest? Like with any battling issues with mental health, do you guys have any huge differences with other people? Like, cause I'm pretty sure we're, we're all, at least I want to say me personally, we've all been struggling with mental health, especially with COVID. Yeah. But like, I think we've all been affected by different things. Like, yeah, we've been affected by the isolation, but there could possibly be other things like underneath, you know? I feel like they were all pretty much like, not to say that we're all the same, but like, I think we can all grasp the same feelings mm-hmm. of like isolation, families at home fighting and getting sick of our parents, money problems. I mean, the stress of school. I mean, all of it, I feel like we can all kind of relate on the same path with that. Mm-hmm. And I even feel like everybody, like anybody who does have like different feelings for like towards their mental health and like what they're going through, I think it all relates to everybody. It's just the opening of like everybody wanting to talk about certain things. Cause I know there's like more things I could talk about, but like, Mm -hmm. it's also a comfort level of like being like, Hey, this is also what I'm going through. And like, not knowing, like Diana said, if somebody else is going through it. And so, yeah, like in a way we can all like, just be on the same playing field about that. Yeah. That's that's good yeah like for me a subtle difference that I noticed is that for the families fighting things and getting sick of our parents I only saw my parents for winter break I've been I moved out when I was like 17 and I've been living here with like my roommates for almost for a year now actually so I don't really have that issue anymore I had it when I still lived over there which I don't want to remember but yeah that's like something so like for families fighting and getting sick of your parents that's something that I personally cannot relate to and that's an example of like differences that we could have when contributing to like the effects of mental health and stuff like that like for me I think the biggest contributor to mental health is like lack of friends lack of social interactions with other people because I don't know anybody here I don't can't think of anybody that I went to high school with like came with me here to San Jose and anyone who did they went back home and lived back with their parents while I stayed here so literally just me alone yeah um I think my friends kind of isolated me I guess that might be a little bit different (laughs) I think they thought I was a germ because I was like nannying and then nobody wanted to hang out with me yeah but um yeah i guess they kind of closed me out of the circle but um yeah um i guess we could move on to the summary and group evaluation yeah all right i think i can take care of that one so um today we talked a lot about about a lot a lot of different experiences people have had with mental health and covid as, uh, as well as um the different effects that quarantine and COVID-19 have had on us and our mental health, as well as just reflecting on general issues with mental health in society and how it's not really treated with the respect that it deserves. And we also shared different visions we had for just the university in general that can kind of help us build a community for mental health so uh for as for a question i'd say for anyone who cares to answer what did you enjoy most about today's dialogue um i can sure um i enjoy just how like we all got to like talk about our personal experiences it might correlate to what i said earlier but Sometimes I feel like, you know, like my friends, um, their parents like are able to help them out. Like their parents are working. But for me, it was opposite. Like my mom got laid off. So I really depend on my job right now to bring income. Like things are starting to like look better now, but I was feeling really stressed out. And I was feeling like, I feel like I was gonna drop out of school as well. So I just really enjoyed like listening to everybody's experience. Like it might be different in one way, but at the end of the day, I feel like I was also able to like relate to what they were sharing. 
So I just enjoy listening to everybody's um, experience and like how open we were. I think one thing that was actually very interesting was how like we watched the video in the beginning, the second video specifically, how it basically related, like basically the video related to everything that we talked about right now. Like we all face the same experience those students out in Texas feel and probably how students around the world probably feel even internationally. And I thought that was really interesting just to see that we all aren't alone in this little mental health struggle that we may have. And I think it's really important that we keep embracing it and keep just moving forward and basically just showing each other that mental health is a real thing and that we need to take care of it one way or another. So I thought that was probably really interesting to me. Thank you very much. Uh, so, oh. Sorry, that was an echo. <laughs> So with, with that, um, how can we use these ideas and experiences that we've discussed today to make an impact on mental health in the future? Um, I actually took what we were talking about, about like the universities doing something. And I feel like the universities have like a list of everything that they have to do. And in a department that may not get used enough, because of like people not knowing about it, I feel like it should be up to us as like the students and the people to like make it aware or like think about it. Like our generation's very social media, like uh, like forward for. And like a lot of people who work at the universities are not young. Like they don't know how to use a lot of social media, how to grasp people. And I feel like it's upon us to take the responsibility and try and reach out to people and help and put it into the university's hands. So it is something that people know and is getting used more because then it's going to come to the university that it is a department that we need that we need to focus on and so I feel like um I really like got a lot of that out of today's like talk and like as much as it, it is the university to like do I feel like it's also a big chunk of us to be able to help our peers out I wholeheartedly agree with that uh does anyone else have any input on that. Okay, if not, I guess we can close this facilitation and kind of uh, just wrap it up, I guess. Um, thank you all for being open and being uh, kind with everyone's experiences and just ideas and dialogue in general. And thank you for being present here. Thank you. Okay. Uh